This brief update represents my offering for today. There's still water next to Alan and three bridges, so he hasn't messed any of that up. Evidence of two of the bridges persists this far at least, and my latest visit to work on Allen was less foggy than last time. I do now have my full-size angle grinder on location, fans of the channel will rejoice at the news, but for this job I decided overkill just wouldn't do for this task. Within the cardboard box though, well, another reel of this orange polypropylene 6mm braided rope. Two reasons. First, I had to use a good proportion of the original reel making a backup towing line for Allenson III on the last voyage leg to Edinburgh after the first towing rope ended up around our prop shaft. Second, reels never seem to go as far as you hope. It's not quite Allen orange, but will weather a bit I hope, and it's polypropes so that it doesn't wet out like nylon or polyester would. I offered a glimpse of this mini operation in a recent episode, and someone in the comments got very cross about using orange rope as railing wrap. So, just to rub in that dismay for our comrade. Over recent years there was original dismay in the comments at how I haven't yet wrapped the rails, despite Alan's arctic destiny, so I've got going on it. You've probably guessed, but these help with grip in the cold, keeping hands from contacting with freezing metal, and they also make it slightly easier to chip away any accumulation of ice that you tend to get in cold, damp, splashy arctic air. There are a few offcuts being used on this section, which is less neat than ideal, but otherwise it's just a simple job of wrapping, tightening and using my palms to get the cord to really lock into place, and then simple knots at each end. I'm sure there's a special mariner's protocol that categorically must be used here, otherwise Alan is going to spontaneously implode. If so, shout at me in the comments. I'll probably end up leaving it as it is though, because nuts can be cracked in more than one way. There's only a handful of camera mounts and so on to work around as I zoom along the deck. I've done the long sections first, and have only once or twice been distracted, checking out that the bridges are still there. Joking aside, I had a Google into their history, and it turns out that in fact the first attempt at the first bridge did end up in a collapse, and tragically, lots of people perished as the train fell into the water. Round and round and round and round we went. I guess I could do the uprights too, but I don't know how often anyone is going to be grabbing onto them. It's been a fun job to do in the fresh air with the podcast playing, especially so as rain was forecast all day, and somehow we dodged it. A few sections of railing have cable conduit bonded to the undersides, and I'm going to have to decide what to do there. I could wrap them, but I'm worried that they'll end up loose as the conduit will flex, plus it means I can only feed wires through from the ends. This'll do for now, and here's a smart sky above Allen I thought I'd share with you, and then move deeply and elegantly from railing wraps to bilge pumps. Allen only has small, shallow mini bilges, and I decided not to have permanent, large pumps fitted. I do have a couple of powerful emergency pumps ready though. However, having used some really Alan! hand and battery operated ones, I decided to make my own little 12 volt mobile bilge pump. The ingredients to start with a medium power self priming 12 volt pump, and a little box. I then made various holes in the box, two for the water hose in and out, one for the switch, and one for the power plug. I've got some thick wall silicon tubing. This is soft enough to help it really pack down small, it's also transparent so I can inspect for blockages. The thick wall helps it avoid kinks or constrictions. One length on the intake side is short-ish, and on the other side a longer length means that we can choose to dump the wastewater in a bucket if oily or dirty, or straight out the hatch if it's just seawater. The pump is rated to easily lift water a metre or two from the bilge and to where it needs to end up, but isn't so powerful that we need high current power supplies or lose control of the whole operation. I attached the hoses with the little jubilee clips that came with the pump. They aren't top of the range, but shouldn't lead to an immediate calamity. Then I wired in the on-off switch and the 12 volt plug, and we jumped outdoors for a test. The test rig required serious planning and redesign phases, but in the end, I chose a bucket at the water end, a storage box to support the pump, a boat trailer as an elaborate hose routing solution, and some gravel covered ground at the hitherto dry end. Power on, no explosion, no leak. Water went at a reasonable speed from one side to the other, success. To reiterate, this is for emptying out small and sometimes inaccessible mini bilge areas and not when in a rush. The self-priming works well, 
and it's effective at pulling the remaining water through and out the end, running the pump to dry so we don't have dribbles of bilge water as I try and put the pump back into storage. The male 12 volt plug is to be embedded with putty into that hole so that it protects all the various components, lacks a messy trading lead, and then I'm free to use my 5 meter plug and socket extension cord when the pump's needed. Well, I did say it was going to be a brief one, but I'll try and have more for you tomorrow when I'll share some of my bigger planned projects for onboard Alan this winter. Exciting ideas in the pipeline for you all to become enraged and delighted about in a suitably unpredictable oscillation of YouTube comment section wonderment. And a reminder for Londoners to sign up for my London live event. I can't open up the other cities until Londoners step up to the plate. You have been warned. Till tomorrow, assuming no unforeseen impediments. Bye.